Many people think about sex and gender in terms of a two-category classification model. Others argue that such an approach is neither biologically nor socially valid. Describe their argument and explain how some people have created new approaches to make sense of the realities in their lives. Hi everyone, uh, we're here with Bernard Franklin, uh, the Chief Executive Inclusion Officer with the NCAA. Uh, I have a few questions for him, um, including, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your role within the NCAA? So basically my role within, within the NCAA is to assure the development of policies and procedures that support the functioning of leadership and development, as well as inclusion groups. Also, administrative areas report to me, and those administrative areas include leadership development and the inclusion programs, as well as research and other education initiatives. Great. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more on the uh, two-sex model um, and how it's being phased out in college athletics? So uh, basically, the two-sex classification system assumes that all humans can be classified into one of two sex categories, and that's either going to be male or female. And these categories are viewed in terms of physiological and psych psychological differences. This leads people often feeling confused, uncomfortable, or even angry when they or others don't fit neatly into one of these two orthodox sex categories. And this kind of leads to people finding it difficult to think critically about gender and why, they, and it kind of explains why they become so defensive when others try to think into gender. And the NCAA is trying to phase this system out because the two sex model uh, marginalizes lesbians, gay men, bisexuals, and intersex people and leads some people to view them as abnormal or even unnatural or immoral because they exist outside the two orthodox sex categories. And so that's why the NCAA is trying to phase out that two sex classification system. Makes sense. Um, and then finally, uh, with that in mind, um, I know the NCAA has brought in a few inclusion policies. Uh, are there any events coming up or anything to help kind of bring awareness to these new policies? Uh, that's a good question. So every year the NCAA has what they call an inclusion forum that goes on. Uh, this upcoming one's going to be in 2018, and it's going to be in Indianapolis, April 16th or April 14th through the 16th, excuse me. And last year, actually, the main focus of this forum was LGBT inclusion in athletics. So. Right now, we're trying to figure out how we can include these sorts of genders and phase out that two-sex model. And basically, what we're trying to do is just bring awareness to coaches, players, administration that male and female is no longer the two ways that you can associate gender. And that's been a big topic of discussion. And there's tons of things online you can find. For example, a good thing would be the Campus Pride Sports Index and the Campus Pride Sports Index provides critical information of understanding, of understanding as well as a vital tool for assisting colleges and universities in ongoing efforts to improve intercollegiate athletics and college recreation for LGBTQ students and players and coaches and so on. Ah, sure. All right, Mr. Franklin, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. And we are here today with Karen Morrison, the Director of Gender Inclusion and LGBT for the NCAA. How's it going? I'm doing well. So can you just elaborate more on your role with the NCAA? So as the Director of Gender Inclusion and LGBT, I focus on issues surrounding Title IX, gender equality, LGBTQ topics, and emerging sports for women. I'm going to do my best to figure out what works on our college campuses, how to engage our community to increase diversity within the Athletics Department at our 1,100 member institutions, and overall promote the importance of inclusion advancement. Okay, and um, could you educate us just more on the NCAA inclusion of uh, transgender student athletes? Of course. So our goal is to establish and maintain inclusive culture that fosters participation of all student athletes and career opportunities. Um, and we introduce our policy by defining the term transgender. So what does transgender mean? Um, trans transgender describes an individual whose gender identity does not match the person's sex at birth. Um, it's been an increasing number of high school and college athletes who are identifying themselves as transgender, and it's important that all people recognize and respect their gender identity. Um, once we as a community are accepting to that, we can develop our responsibility to ensure that these students have access to equal opportunities um, in a safe environment, and that is what we have done with the NCAA inclusion of transgender student athletes. Um, we've provided the best practices and recommendations for athletics administrators with information and tools to support the participation of transgender athletes. And 
As more research on the physiological effects of gender transition on athletic performance becomes available, undergoing hormonal treatment is not an option to allow transgenders to compete in sport. Well, that's all I have for you today, Karen. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Pat Griffin. I'll be the final interviewee tonight for the Q&A uh, for the LGBT equality in sports. Um, a little background on myself. I have over 30 years uh, of experience with advocacy for the LGBT uh, sports community. Um, I'm the author of books uh, such as Strong Women, Deep Closets, Lesbians and Homophobia in Sport, and co-author of such books as On the Team, Equal Opportunities for Transgender Student Athletes, the NCAA Guide for the Inclusion of Transgender Athletes, and Champions of Respect. NCAA Guide for the Inclusion of LGBTQ Student Athletes. In 1990, I helped found uh, Changing the Game, the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, also known as the GLSEN Project. I'd like to open up for a few questions from you guys. Yes, first question. Could you give us a little more information and background on the GLSEN Project and what was the goal um, for founding it? Uh, of course, yes. Uh, so the GLSEN Project was started in 1990 by myself and a few other teachers in Massachusetts. Uh, the goal is very simple. Uh, the goal is to allow for every student, grades uh, K through 12, across the country to be treated with respect and valued, regardless of their gender identity, sexual orientation, or gender expression. According to our research, eight out of 10 LGBT students are still harassed to this day uh, by their fellow classmates. The GLSEN project currently has over 30 chapters across 25 different states in the U.S., and each one works on a local level within their communities uh, to help support LGBTQ students and help strengthen, and in many cases, create gay, straight alliances uh, within those communities. Um, these help train educators and provide opportunities to bring positive change within the schools. Next question? Yes. So, Pat, with regards to your books and co-authored works that are based on the LGBTQ inclusion within the NCAA athletics, what major steps forward have you seen in the understanding and equality of LGBT community with regards to college athletics? Great question. Uh, the NCAA has taken many great strides with regards to the LGBTQ inclusion within collegiate sports. Uh, with regards to the underlying issue of homophobia, uh, the NCAA has provided schools with resources such as workshops on sexual orientation, um, issues as far as the CHAMPS Life Skills Curriculum uh, help with this. Uh, the NCAA is also one of the organizations that endorses the It Takes a Team initiative, which is an informational film and curriculum based on bringing awareness of the community and ultimate goal of inclusion of members of the LGBTQ community within athletics and academics. Thank you. Yep. Uh, time for one more, yes. For any high school students out there um, that are still worried about their place and sense of belonging at any particular college or university, what advice or words would you, would you use to encourage men, would you give them? Uh, well, the first thing I would do is point them in direction of the uh, Campus Pride Index. Uh, the index, which was founded in 2007, uh, is essentially a grading tool used to rank colleges and universities based on eight different LGBTQ friendly factors. Uh, some of these factors include uh, LGBTQ, TQ, pardon me, um, uh, academic support is one of them, uh, as well as campus safety, uh, just to name a few. Um, although this index shouldn't be used as a substitute uh, for actual uh, in-depth research on any given university, uh, it allows for anyone who is within the LGBTQ uh, community to, to use as a basis for whether or not that school will be a good fit for them. Um, secondly, I would remind them that the times right now for the LGBTQ community are changing. Um, right now we have probably the biggest amount of support uh, across the NCAA, across gay straight alliances within different universities um, than we've ever had before. Uh, and that, that amount of support um, is only going to grow. Uh, with the, the new laws and new policies that the NCAA has, has passed with as far as inclusion, um, rest assured for anyone who's looking to go to a university, uh, there are steps that can be taken to allow for you to feel comfortable 
um, and there are plenty of things in place as far as support in case anyone is still trying to feels the need to hide from their their uh, what they actually identify as. Thank you, guys. In conclusion, based on Coakley's definition of the two-sex model, we feel this model to be phased out and no longer valid within today's collegiate athletics. The formation and implementation of the NCAA Inclusion Office has led to written policies to encourage participation of all students and decrease discrimination towards the LGBTQ community. Initiatives such as the Glesson Project and Campus Pride Index have helped validate the fact that the two-sex model is no longer present and we are working towards acceptance of all gender and sexual orientations.